Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the search for MH370. This episode is called Point of Interest, episode 313. A MITRE 8605 has basically been in a stationary situation, at operating at about 1.1 to 1.7 knots between 0836 UTC on January the 4th up to a few moments ago at 0556 UTC on January the 5th. As I said, she's been operating at speeds between 1 and 1.7 knots in the in a rather erratic um, pattern, if you like. The sea is at 3.6 metres, and uh, that's about 11.8 feet, and the temperature is 17 Celsius, and the wind is 11 knots from the southwest. Now we're showing you three graphics. The first is her position relative to Western Australia. The second shows her overall, act, act, overall activity since resumption of the search. And the third is the activity over the last 20 plus hours. You can see a distinctly different pattern. As, I'm, as I suggested, the activity is really quite different to previous launches and retrievals. And we believe that Amada 8605 has launched an ROV to examine a point of interest. Now, I've discussed this with Richard Godfrey this morning, and uh, he does believe that uh, it is an ROV launch. Um, now, the location is, in fact, where it started, the search on December the 31st. We are now showing a map generated by Richard Godfrey about one hour ago which gives you all the relative details and uh, positions. We will obviously monitor this activity on an hourly basis and keep you updated as things evolve. So before I get to some questions, please subscribe to us, please like us, keep, please keep those questions coming and those great comments, we do appreciate them. And of course, please do now subscribe to Richard's new YouTube channel and the link to that is below. Now, a question from Simon, Extra Uniform 1 Quebec Tango. Could I ask how much variation in altitude there is in the topography of the seabed in this sweep that you showed? You mentioned mountains, for example. Are they just a few hundred metres or are we talking thousands of metres? And as a follow-up question, does the submersible have to adjust its depth as it passes a mountain to stay within a set distance from the seabed? Yes, to both questions. Uh, so the sea floor is about 800 metres to 6,000 metres deep. So they are serious mountain ranges, serious volcanoes and very gnarly terrain. And yes, the, uh, the AUV absolutely has to adjust it's uh, uh, scanning um, altitude, if you like, uh, from the seabed, and uh, it does that continuously. That's why it's essential to map the sea floor uh, before it goes off on these, uh, these missions, which has been done. Now, a number of viewers have asked what vessel tracking system we use. Now, it's Vessel Finder, and we pay to track... 8605 for up to the minute data and other features. It's about US $20 a month. Now you can go to other um, folks uh, as well, like marine traffic and others, but it's going to be the same situation. Uh, they will track these vessels, but you'll get a, a position that the vessel was out a couple of days earlier and uh, a lot of features won't be available to you like the constant tracking. Uh, which we showed you already. So that's uh, that's what we do, and that's, I think, what you have to do to get up-to-the-minute tracking of uh, the vessel. David Dooling, 5997, says, I'm irked by the cockpit voice recorder's limited recording capacity. Have these been improved yet? They need to be able to record the cockpit for an entire flight instead of overwriting its content every two hours. That seems ridiculously flawed. Also, if pilots are able to turn the ACARs and CVR off, that needs to be addressed. Some way for a remote operator to seize control of the cockpit when the crew act activates an emergency alert would be a sweet tool. 
There could be a device that overrides the lock cockpit door too, aside from the permission system, just in case. So focusing on the CVR, David, this has been addressed. A new global aviation standard mandates increasing the cockpit voice recorder duration from two hours to 25 hours to prevent data loss during long flights, covering pre-flight to post-flight activities and this was mandated by EASA and ICAO for new aircraft in 2021, with the US FAA requiring it from 2025, and refits to older planes from 2030. Existing aircraft required to carry a CVR and flight data recorder must be refitted with a 25-hour system by 2030. Now, also, many have asked about the tracking of aircraft post MH370, and a lot has been done. Namely, the Global Aeronautical Distress and Safety System, GDAS. This framework is now fully activated to ensure that if a plane stops normal tracking, search and rescue, SAR, regions have immediate access to ship positions and rescue resources via satellite networks. Key to this is an Autonomous Distress Tracking, ADT. As of January 1st, 2025, ICAO requires new aircraft over 27,000 kilos to have equipment that autonomously transmits position information every minute when in a distressed state. These systems are designed to trigger automatically based on abnormal flight behaviour and cannot be easily disabled by the crew. The ADT function is used to identify the location of an aircraft in distress with the aim of establishing to a reasonable extent the location of an accident site within six nautical mile radius. It uses onboard systems to broadcast the aircraft position. Now the triggering criteria for ADT includes analysis of unusual attitudes, unusual altitudes, unusual speeds, potential collision with terrain, total loss of thrust propulsion on all engines, mode A squawk codes, etc. The triggers are defined, making sure that the criteria used maximises the probability of detection of an upcoming catastrophic event. When an aircraft is in a distressed condition, position information is transmitted at least once every minute without the need for flight crew. From a high-level perspective, GADS is designed to address three specific issues. The late notification of SAR services when aircraft are in distress, missing or an inaccurate end-of-flight aircraft position information, for example, the location of wreckage in the event of a crash, lengthy and costly retrieval of flight data for accident investigation. The consequent objectives of GADS are therefore to ensure timely detection of aircraft in distress, initiate search and rescue, SAR, actions as efficiently and quickly as possible, ensure tracking of aircraft in distress and provide timely and accurate location of end of flight, accurately direct SAR operations, enable efficient and effective SAR operations, and ensure timely retrieval of the flight data recorder data. In 2023, Airbus began installing ELT-DT emergency locator transmitter distress tracking in all new A330, 350, 320 and 220 aircraft, and Boeing is also doing that as well. January 1st, 2025, official implementation of the deadline for ADT in all new build aircraft and approximately 88 countries have confirmed compliance, although the FAA does not currently mandate it for all US domestic operations. So I hope that that uh, answers the question. And one more in, that, in the same vein, uh, black boxes today are required to send signals out for um, 90 days, not the previous 30 days. So that's another change that has been made in the wake of the tragic loss of MH370. So, uh, viewers, thank you again for subscribing to us. If you don't, please do. 
please like us. Please keep the comments coming and the questions coming. They're great. And also, please do subscribe to Richard's channel. Again, the link is below. And like I did the other day, I'm going to finish off with that really interesting Geoscience Australia fly-through um, to just give you a refresher on how gnarly the terrain is. And prior to that, I'm going to use the map that Richard provided showing the, the, the overview of that uh, sweep with the relevant um, search areas identified. So you can see that, then you can do the run through and have a look. And that will finish off this particular episode. So look, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. And we'll keep a very, very close eye on Amada 8605 and let you know the moment anything of, of interest comes up. Thank you very much.